Welcome to Electron Line, and now let's talk about the proton proton chain. What is that? Well, it's a chain of events that happens at the center of our sun, as well as all most stars in the universe. Not all stars, but most stars in the universe. It's a process in which stars convert hydrogen into helium at the cores of the stars. Now, what happens? Well, in general, it is four protons that are being slammed together that get turned into a helium nucleus. But that doesn't happen all at once. You don't take four protons, slam them together, turn them into helium. It actually happens through a series of steps. The reason why they call the process the proton-proton chain is because it is a series of protons that get slammed together and ultimately form helium. But the three steps are as follows. The first step is that two protons come together at very high velocities high enough velocities to overcome the repulsive forces of the protons and slam together. Well, how do you get two protons to move fast enough so they can actually slam together? Because the repulsive forces between the protons are absolutely enormous. You need high enough velocities, and those velocities can be obtained if the temperature at the core of a star reaches a high enough level where the speeds get to the point where they will actually collide. The temperature required for that to happen is 10 million degrees Kelvin or centigrade, not Fahrenheit, centigrade degrees, and of the sun, the center of the sun is at a temperature of 15 million degrees centigrade, so plenty of temperature there to cause the atoms, or the, or the well, they are atoms in a way, but the nuclei of the hydrogen atoms, which are the protons, to slam together. Now, when they get close enough together, there's a force called the nuclear strong force that holds the two together and overcomes the repulsive forces, the electrical and repulsive forces between the two charges of the two protons. At that point, what happens is the two come together. One of the two turns into a neutron. Oh, how does a proton turn into a neutron? By ejecting a particle that has a positive charge. That particle happens to be the antiparticle of an electron, a positive electron called a positron. And in addition to that, a electron neutrino is being ejected as well, which carries off part of the energy. So the energy carried off by the positive electron or the positron and the electron neutrino is part of how the sun, how stars uh, generate energy. So after the two protons stick together and one of the protons convert into a neutron, now we have what we call deuteron, which is a heavy hydrogen. It's an isotope of hydrogen which has one proton and one neutron. The next step in the process is one of those deuterons then slams into another proton and forms helium-3. This is where, again, a high enough temperature is required to get the two positive particles to slam together with a high enough velocity so they'll stick together and nuclear strong force will hold them together. And in the process, they do that. What we have now is we have two protons and one neutron together forming helium-3, which is a helium isotope which, only, which has two protons but only one neutron. In the process, also a very high energy alpha particle which is basically a very high energy photon, is ejected as well, carrying off some of the energy generated in the nuclear reaction. The final step in the proton-proton chain is where you have two of these helium-3 two, uh, helium nuclei, or he yeah, helium-3 particles in a way, that again come together at high enough velocities for them to actually collide with each other. Now here, you definitely need at least 10 million degrees Kelvin because they each have two positive charges and they definitely don't want to be together. There's just an enormous repulsive force between those positive charges, but with a high enough velocity, it will slam together and form a helium nucleus. Basically, a helium nucleus is an alpha particle with, of course, all the electrons removed. Now, remember that we have a total of four protons and two neutrons that come together in the collision. The helium particle, the helium nucleus, the alpha particle, only has two protons and two neutrons. The remaining two protons are being ejected by themselves and become part of the core of the star again. But again, the very high kinetic energy of those two particles are also part of the energy generation in this process. Through these various steps, mass is being converted to energy. Einstein is the one who realized the, the, the energy equals mc squared equation where, mass, where energy can be generated by converting mass directly into energy. For every one kilogram of matter turned into energy, C squared is an enormous large number, 9 times 10 to the 16, and that's how many joules of energy are being generated for every kilogram of matter being converted to energy. Well, how much matter does the sun convert to energy in this fashion? Well, for every one of these reactions, proton-proton chain reactions, the three steps in the proton-proton chain, 
0.0265 times the mass of the proton is directly converted in this matter to energy. The total energy generated, 24.69 million electron volts, which is a lot of energy, to this triple set of reactions. The missing energy or the missing mass is called the mass defect, which is then converted into energy. Every second of every day, for the last 4.6 billion years, the sun has been converting hydrogen into helium and therefore pr producing energy by the mass to energy conversion. About 4 billion kilograms, about 9 billion pounds of matter is being converted to energy every single second in the, in the core of the sun. The total energy production or the power of the sun is about equal to 3.9 times 10 to the 26 watts. So that's how much energy that's how much power the sun produces through this, through this triple, to this proton-proton uh, chain reaction of nuclear reactions at the center of the sun. Now, how much longer will the sun be able to do that? The sun has enough matter in the core, enough hydrogen in the core to do this for another five billion or so years. So the total time that the sun will spend converting hydrogen to helium in this fashion is about a 10 billion year period. It's because the stable process will last, does last so long that life on the Earth can exist because we have the benefit of the stable energy source that has been able to allow the Earth to produce life for all these billions of years that is in exist has been in existence and will continue to support life with this energy production for billions of years yet to come. Eventually this process will end, but not until another five billion years have gone by, so we're okay. We don't have to worry about an energy shortage in that respect for a very long time. And that is what is known as the proton-proton chain, the nuclear reaction process that takes place at the center of the sun with temperatures of at least 10 million degrees to allow high enough speeds to get these objects, those protons, deutrons, and helium-3 particles to collide with each other to the point where they will join, the nuclear strong force, strong force will hold them together, and mass can then be converted to energy, producing the enormous power that the sun produces. And that's how it's done.